to 18 one forces in a fluid so again let's look at solids and let's compare forces in, in a fluid to forces in a solid okay so if you've got a, say an object there and you apply a force on either side and the object is in equilibrium say then we know that what happens is this object kind of uh, it deforms right it deforms so you, you, you're applying this force on this object and this deformation um, causes a stress in the object okay right so that's the important thing for us to see is that you're applying a force the object is is in equilibrium but actually what you're doing is you you're stressing the object you're deforming it and there's two um, results from this either you have a permanent uh, or rather let's start off with either you have an elastic deformation that means that if you remove the force then the object will go back to its original shape just like a spring for example the other one is it deforms permanently permanent deformation okay um, which can lead then to fracture okay so examples of the the stress are seen here in this uh, in this figure 18.2 okay this is the one well let's just look at this you've got a tensile stress where you apply these uh, forces uh, in this manner and you stretching the object and you can see that um, the object was originally in this shape and then you stretch it and then it becomes thinner as you stretch as you elongate it okay then you can also have a compressive stress where you apply the uh, again opposing forces but you are compressing it you can still see the again that change in shape then another type of stress is bulk stress okay bulk stress is when you change the volume uh, of the object by applying pressure on uh, on all sides of the object so that the entire volume shrinks okay and then the last one shear stress is when you have these forces that are tangential to the surface what you notice with these types of stresses all these forces are perpendicular to the surfaces can you see that okay tensile compressive and, and bulk but shear stress is tangent to the surface so it would for example take a a rectangle or a square shaped object and make it into a parallelogram okay all right so we've looked at we've looked at tensile compressive and we've looked at bulk and shear 